All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Shauna Shu, who is over in Oregon. How are you doing, Shauna? I am top of the morning, top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> top of the morning to you. Yeah, it is funny, actually, um, top of the morning, that's a, uh, that phrase that, uh, you know, Americans use for Ireland, like never used by Irish people ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Well, there we go. It is, by the way, the top of the morning, uh, it 10 is. o'clock my time. So there we perfect. go. Perfect. Perfect. Anyway, and Shauna is a lead- leadership coaching and speaking expert for organizations who are ready to evolve. And guess what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about that age old issue of how to become a better questioner for better business, because let's face it, we all think we're great at asking questions, but it oftentimes works out that people aren't as good as they think they are. So when you talk about better questioning, Shona, what do you mean? Uh, Good. That's a good question right there. What does a better question mean? When I talk to my clients, what I uncover is that most of us, whether we realize it or not, are telling, and you know you are because you're saying, well, I told them, and I told them this and this and this, and yeah, well, I told you this. Whenever you hear yourself using that vernacular a lot, you realize you're not questioning them at all. You're telling them. The other thing we do that we don't even realize is we're selling. We're selling our idea. We're selling our um, initiative. We're selling them about our where we, the direction we want them to head. And here's the last thing that we do that I think we don't even realize is we are allowing people to do, whether it's come in late, whether it's not finish a project, and it, it's like, well, next time let's do better. We're telling them about that, but we've allowed them to kind of get away with something. And the more we allow something, and we don't even realize we are, the more other people are looking at us going, well, if he can do it, I can do it, or if mm-hmm. she can do it, but I can do it. And we're down these slippy slopes. So yeah. the first question you have is yourself. So the, how we get to be a better questioner is to ask ourselves, am I telling, am I selling, or am I allowing something right now? You got to ask yourself first. Before you start asking, you know, let me let me ask you this deep question. <laughs> Is yeah, it even no, appropriate? <laughs> it's it, no, it's a great point, Shauna, because um, it's like um, it's like everything. It's like accountability. When you mention accountability to people, they say, "Oh, yes, I'm totally in favor of accountability." And then when you say, "Yeah, but it starts with yourself, like our own personal <laughs> accountability," then they're like, mm, "I prefer if Shauna was uh, held accountable first. <laughs> and I would prefer to hold Shauna accountable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we um, somebody once said this, and I don't know who that we judge ourselves by our intentions, and we right. judge others by their actions. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a great point. It's like, well, you know, I did this from the best of intentions, even though it was a complete disaster. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we get to be there? Number one, questioning yourself. Am I the best leader I can be in this instance? Did I ask appropriate questions? What's my intent? What do I want from this person? And, you know, a lot of times I was working with a client the other day and her job was to help, um, There was a new software and corporate had put it in and no one liked it. Matter of fact, it was hurting business because they had not rolled. They'd taken something away before they rolled the new software in. And so she was trying to help this person. And I said, what's your intent with talking to the corporate head guy? And they go, to be heard. Well, not such a great intent. (laughs) He can hear you and nothing will get changed. So really asking yourself, what do I want from the end of this conversation? Because if you know what you want, you'll ask different questions. You know, if I want to make you wrong, I'll ask a question like, what were you thinking? (laughs) Well, obviously you were not thinking, you know, uh, so people will go, I ask a good question. No, you didn't. You ask a question to make someone wrong. So what, so it's not even being this best, these great questioners. It's really what, what's my heart saying? What do I want from this person? And if I want to help them see it a new way, then I'll ask a very good question. 
It's yeah. almost like, you know, asking questions about do I really, am I asking a question because I really want to gain some insight or information, or am I asking a question because I want to confirm or validate something that I already think? So, I mean, I'm asking you a question, but I'm not really asking you a question. I'm just looking for a few cues that you're validating what I already think. Absolutely. That was well said. And, and then my clients come to me and say, oh, yeah, 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 I ask great questions. And I'm listening and I'm thinking, well, they weren't that great. <laughs> but I'm not going to say that to them. I'm going to say, did I'll ask this question. Did you get the result you wanted? Mm -hmm. And if they say, well, they might. Well, yeah, they feel terrible. Oh, that was what you were trying to do is make this other human feel terrible. Oh, you won. You won there, right? No, we weren't trying to make them feel terrible. We wanted results. We want them to do more work or we want them to do it differently or we want a better client experience. You know, well, I told that client they didn't know what they were talking about. Oh, good. What was your intent there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people, love. And by the way, people, people love that. People love being told they don't know what they're doing or they're doing. <laughs> I've of always found I've always found people react fantastically when you say that to them. <laughs> but it comes back to that point, as you said, the intent part. Like I love this that you've raised this because I don't think people think a lot about the intent of their questions. They just know. I mean, it's like in a sense that you're, a lot of people think I, I know I need to ask questions, so they come up with a bunch of questions. But as you said, I don't think very many people think about what is the intent of this question. Yeah, they might say, "Well, it's a discovery question I'm asking," so I. I learn more and you go, okay, but that's still vague, right? Right. And also people will say in sales, this is your gig there to get the sale. I'm asking questions to get the sale. Mm -hmm. Well, you're really pretty short sighted. If you want the sale, then ask, would you like to buy this? <laughs> <laughs> that's the question um, that, and by the way, people don't ask that last question. You know, they get all the way up to there and then they don't actually ask, do you want to buy this? Because they're frightened. But if they were to get to the place where my intent is to uncover your needs, my intent is to find out what it is, because my product might not be right for you. It really might not be. And so if my intent is the sale, I'm not paying attention to whether it's right for you. Yeah. But if I look at it and say, what's the need that you have? How do I add value to you? Now listen to the questions I'm asking myself. And if this product is right for you, are you interested in actually solving the problem you have? Mm -hmm. Those are questions that actually get you a sale. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think the the other part of that is um, asking the good asking the good questions, making sure you understand the intent that you're asking with. And then I, the next piece, Shauna, is just the listening, the actual <laughs> listening, yeah. Because that's the other part. I mean, you can sometimes get people to ask great questions, but they're not listening to the answer. They're still thinking about what they're going to say next. Or as we said earlier, they're just looking for cues. They're not really active listening. And I think that's a, it's a really key important point is when people learn how to check and validate what you're saying, like repeat back to you, make sure I'm understanding, because that's the greatest level of respect you can give to somebody is really showing them that you're trying to understand what they're saying. You and I are exactly in the same place. And it brings to the next piece where people will ask me, what questions should I ask? And in sales, what are these series of questions? Or my clients who are working on leadership and saying, Sean, I should, I don't know. Let me write those questions down. And here's the nugget, this juicy bit. If you're actually listening to what they say, that's the next question. So if, if I say, what is it that you want this product to do? Or what is it that you want as the end result? And they're vacillating or they're saying, well, I think it might be this. Or what I really want is this then I don't have to worry. I don't have to think. I can just then say, okay, if what I heard you just say is, and repeat it, like you mentioned, then the next question is a natural. If this can do that, and, and you don't have to have your pocket of questions, and, you know, your, your little cue card, hang on, because then that's about you and it's not about them. Yeah. And I believe all of it should be about the other person.
Yeah, because let's face it, your initial question should be to prompt a conversation. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have like, you know, here's my list of 10 questions that I'm going right. to ask you regardless, regardless of what you say, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you the question. So your initial questions should be to uncover things that you can then develop and, and dive a little bit deeper into. Um, but like I said, I mean, I think a lot of people, uh, they do, they do formulate questions and then don't listen to answers. But as you said, if you're listening to the answers, then you're finding your next question. And then again, it's, it's, it's going deeper. Well, and also what's deep, you know, I, I, I was listening to, or I, I read the book, I think it's called Three Wishes. And the story was so well done because it, it talked about a man who didn't want to go to this, you know, uh, dinner party thing and everybody's wandering around the house having a drink or whatever and a guy turns to him and he said uh i don't know how you feel about small talk and he goes i hate it he goes great so you want to do big talk oh wow it's like <laughs> suddenly you know ding, 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 ding. So we all yeah yeah what's big talk what does that mean and and that's the difference and i think sometimes we're asking questions for small talk how are you today when you don't care? So what is big talk or what is a question that might go to the nugget of what somebody's thinking? And, and maybe that's it. And yet it's startling to people, especially if they can't answer, I think, right? No, no, I 100% I agree with you. And I think that's a, that's a really great point about asking the big question because sometimes people get too hung up on the on the small talk and the, you know, building that relationship bit when sometimes that's not what is appropriate. What is appropriate is actually getting to the big issues as fast as you can. Well, if we can stay away from things that hurt us down the road, or if you cannot bring your own uh, bias, politically, uh, pandemically, we're, we're in a really interesting, you know, uh, I would, you know, we were like, let's get into some deep conversation or is it really, or are you curious or are you just asking questions so that you could make your point? And if you, if you're just asking a question to find out where people lay on one side of the political script, you know, field, you're probably not, you don't have the right intent to begin with. So I'm just curious, and that's another question. I'm curious. If I'm curious about people, then tell me why you think that. Ah, okay. Versus, well, have you considered? Do you even know? And next thing we know, we're telling and selling. And so, we're firing off. We're firing links to them. Look at this. Yep. Yep. You're wrong. <laughs> and basically, that's no curiosity at all. Animals, and I use a lot of animals. I have a TED, couple TEDx talks, and he used animals quite a bit in them. And one of the reasons I do is because they're, they're, animals are so much more accepting than humans are in so many different ways. And so instead of the, what do you think about, it's, I'm curious, you know, what's the best thing about? Now think of the difference in that question. Not what do you think about? You know, I, I ask my leaders not to ask people how they feel. You know, we're all it, with a pandemic, you know, well, how, are, how are you feeling? Well, one of the reasons I do that is because I, I, I encourage them not to ask people how they feel is because your feelings go up and down. One minute you feel terrific and then you step in poo and you feel bad. You know, or maybe that's just because I have puppies around. <laughs> but my feelings go up and down. But I'm curious, what's your view on? Or I'm curious, what is the best thing about this? Now, suddenly yeah. we're in a much richer conversation that, yeah, well, I feel it's wrong. Absolutely. Get it? Yeah, no, so I abso saying, absolutely. And yeah. just, well, just wanted to build on that because I know somebody who, who does that with an elderly, um, an elderly parent, actually, because they stopped ever asking them, you know, how are you how are you feeling because when they asked that question um you know they would launch into all of these things and ailments and things that weren't going well and knowing and you know and they a little bit of a hypochondriac to begin with so um so switch to start asking about 
what you know what so what did you do today or what are you going to do or this and and the whole conversation is completely different right and it's all upbeat and positive and stuff and so to your point I think you have to be careful, absolutely be careful what you're asking and asking f questions about, you know, f feelings, or how do you feel about things? I mean, that's just, let's say, let's face it, like feelings are pretty irrational a lot of the time. <laughs> yes, they are. And so we talk, let's talk from the first thing, how, what good thing, you ask yourself, but also your lover, your spouse, whoever's in the house, your kids, if instead of how was school today, but if you go tell me one good thing that happened yeah. or after the good thing there wasn't a single good thing that happened what what was surprising surprising yeah did anything surprise you today and suddenly doing, 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 all the synapses in the brain start going and then you're going to have a much better conversation with the people that live in your house what one good thing happened or what was surprising or startled you? Is there anything that startled you today? I love those kinds of questions. And you're going to get a completely different kind of, of relationship when you're there. Yeah. And, and the good thing, I mean, you can use them in business as well because it's the same thing. It's like I often ask people, I mean, you know, say what, you know, when you when you did that initiative or when you tried to roll that out, you did that like uh you know, what surprised you? What weren't you anticipating? What weren't you expecting that happened? And that can get people into a whole, like then suddenly they're thinking about things differently. Um, you know, they're going, yeah, because I wasn't really expecting this and it turned out this way and that actually worked out well, but this I really wasn't expecting and it didn't. And suddenly you have a very rich conversation going. I love it. I ask at the beginning of each one of my coaching calls, I we go through a small guided meditation to get rid of whatever, or was before because we have a tendency to go from call to call to zoom to yep, zoom yep. and we're bringing the energy of whatever the other one was so first we clear the mind and then i say please give me a win and it's like i knew you were going to ask me but i i don't uh, because they think it should be a big thing and what it teaches me is is that people aren't looking for wins so then in a meeting if you were to say we're going to kick off our meeting with one win per person, just what's a win, what's a win, what's a win, what's a win. It could be as small as serve the client really well. It could be as, it could be as huge as finished a gigantic project or got a brand new client. Yep. But when we look for wins, because guess what our meetings are all about? How do we improve? What's the thing that we need to do to increase sales? How do we get more market share? And it's, it's always how do we get things better? But if you're only focused on those things all the time, you miss the celebrations and the fact that there is much going right. Do more of that. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an interesting human um, characteristic that we have. I always use the example of the of the annual performance review. Yes, most people's experience of the annual performance review is. Okay, Shauna, here's here's something that you did well this year. Okay, well done on that. Now here's 52 things that you didn't that I want you to work on for next year. <laughs> Absolutely. And they call that the sandwich, right? Say something good and then all the negative yeah. and something good. Um, yeah. the performance review, I have my own view that I've given yeah. my clients for a long time where instead of saying here's something you've done really well this year, and here's 52 things, very funny, John. I'll just look at and say, how about we ask them if on, on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the best, well, why don't you rate your year? Mm. Oh, yeah. If they rated a 10 and you were thinking more like a five, you realize where your problems are. If yeah. they say a five and you were thinking more like an eight, you realize where your problems are. And I think it's one of the most brilliant techniques mm -hmm. because we're waiting for our boss to tell us how we did. Well, bang that. Yeah. <laughs> I want but to also, <laughs> also interesting because you said, how would you rate your year? You didn't say, how would you rate yourself? Right. How would and you that, rate your year? And that gives, and that provides me with a little bit of a safer, in my head, probably a safer space to go, oh, ask me to rate my You're not saying, so John, how do you rate yourself this year? You're just saying, how do you rate your year? It's, it's, it's nuanced, but it's powerful. It is powerful. And ultimately, you could do it. It depends on where they are, but you could say, please rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on years using PTO or 
Did yeah. you come in on time? Punctuality, rate yourself. And you have those, the results in front of you. So if they say, oh, 10, and I'm always punctual in your life. Should we look at the record? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say, yeah, no, you're correct. Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the clock is right twice, even a stop yeah. clock, right? <laughs> so, and, and when you've got that, you're not the one on the gun where you have to run the the review you let them run the review and if they say i was an eight and you're like that seems valid to me what's your plan to pull it up to a 10 yeah and then they have to come up with this i i, I like as a leader not to do the work for everyone else i believe this is my definition of a leader is to help others uncover or discover it themselves Mm -hmm. So if I ask the right questions, then they'll go, oh, 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 instead of this is what you should do, telling them, this is the initiative we're all going to focus on, selling them. I want them to, to figure it out because I, if you hired them, they have to be good, right? Yeah. No, it, it sounds an awful like personal accountability there, Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous, this outrageous is suggestion. Yeah. This is why my clients hire me and keep me around yeah. because I'm, I'm keeping their feet to the fire and they're becoming the questioners for their teams. And then when I question them and say, huh, I heard you say, I told them, I told them, I told them three times. And they're like, I did? Yeah. No, I think it, I think it's absolutely fascinating, Sean, and we could probably talk for hours about this, but this has been great. I think some real nuggets in there. I love the idea about it, look at the intent of your questioning. Look as if are you are you asking questions? Are you telling? Are you really listening to the uh, uh, really listening to the answers? And are you taking accountability for things, you know, starting with yourself? Bravo. Well, it was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, all of Shauna's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, I'm, as you caught, I'm a coach and it's my, it's my sweet spot. I'm also a speaker. So I have the TEDx talks and all of that could be found on my website, shaunashu.com. And I know you're going to have to look underneath to be or figure out how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> and my goal, what I do is I have a uh, uh, free quiz people can take to uncover their blind spots, but I also offer myself for these clarifying calls. And I do it for free when somebody wants to schedule one because they dig my energy and it's the way that I stay connected to what's going on out there. And it's a gift. So I love to do that for people as well. So yeah, I would, I would highly encourage it. I mean, you can see uh, Shauna's energy flowing through this. I mean, I feel great after this interview. So yeah. see, transfer of energy. Fantastic. Listen, Shauna, thank you again. Thank you all for listening and watching. And I will see you for another interview really soon. Thank you. Great work, John. Thank you.